So there are some conditions that can happen that happen very quickly. And that's part of the reason why childbirth can be dangerous. According to the CDC, 3.6 million-ish babies were born in 2020. Those little miracles of life, bundles of joy that look like little grandpas. <gasps> Jamie, do you remember when your two girls were born? Do you remember that moment, what you felt? Oh, I remember that moment like it was yesterday. I remember when my firstborn, Amelia, was born. Um, and then I definitely remember when little Scarlett was born as well. It was one of the greatest moments of my life. Here's another question. Do you remember when you delivered your first baby in medical school? Oh man, University of Iowa. It was 2007. The resident at the time, she was like, this is this woman's fifth baby. It's coming right out. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I knew what that meant, right? I had no idea, right? And the lady was like, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And pushed one time, literally, in like half a second, baby came right out into my hand. And I was, it was like, I, I almost fumbled the baby. I delivered my first baby on March 5th, 2010 at around 1 a.m. And March 5th is my birthday. So like this little thing came out and I was like, happy birthday to you and also me and this rules. And I'm always gonna remember that. Let's talk about the miracle of life childbirth because I'm tempted to say, Jamie, that neither you or I consistently deliver babies nowadays. We are not the experts here. Not at all. But listen, welcome back to Dr. Saying Stuff, the show where we talk about topics that you guys all search for. I'm Dr. Jamie Rutland. And I'm Dr. Alok Patel. You all are Googling a topic that I Googled, Jamie probably Googled recently, called childbirth. Here's what's crazy about childbirth. So many things have to go right during pregnancy and during the delivery process to wind up with a healthy newborn baby. It is a daunting task that we've actually been doing since the dawn of civilization. To set the record straight, we brought on an expert to talk to us all about childbirth and the most important things that you need to know based on questions that you all ask. Dr. Heather Irabunda, thanks for joining our show today. Hi, I'm Dr. Heather Irabunda and I'm a board certified OBGYN based in New York City. Number one, what are the actual stages of childbirth? What do they mean? In childbirth or labor, there are three stages that are noted. The first stage is when your cervix is dilating. So you're going from a closed cervix to an open cervix. And we consider fully dilated 10 centimeters. The cervix is a part of the uterus, which is the bottom part of the uterus, which I consider like a door that needs to open in order for the baby to come out. So the first stage is getting that door open. The second stage is the actual birthing part that people think about. So that's the part where you're pushing the baby out if this is a vaginal delivery. The third stage is when the placenta is delivered. So it's after the baby's born and the placenta is what's left in the body and left in the uterus. And so that needs to be delivered. So that's considered the third stage. And here's a question I've always had, because I remember being on that rotation being an ob people would say, oh, she's four centimeters. Oh, she's six centimeters. I'm gonna be honest, there was about two weeks, cause that rotation was six weeks, where I had no idea what that meant and I was afraid to ask questions. But here's the question. What is cervical dilation? And why is that maximal number always seem to be 10 centimeters? Cervical dilation refers to the opening of the cervix. You want the cervix to dilate to 10 centimeters because that is approximately the diameter of a baby's head, like a newborn baby. And so essentially you want the baby to be able to come out of the cervix and out of the vagina. So the cervix needs to dilate to 10 centimeters. Can you tell us about the most common indications for a C-section, how safe it really is, and anything else you can say to calm those fears about this incredibly common and necessary surgery. C-sections are very common procedures that are done here in the United States. In fact, it is the most common procedure that people who are assigned female at birth get in their lifetime. C-sections are very safe procedures and their complication rates are relatively low. However, there is a risk with any major surgery that you have and a C-section is one of those. So there are complications like heavy bleeding, infection, injury to other organs around the uterus, or even things like blood clots that can happen after you have a C-section, but we definitely monitor you and 
and do things to try to prevent those complications from happening. C-sections can be done for a variety of different reasons. Some of the most common reasons are, for example, things like fetal distress when the baby heart rate goes down or there's some sign that the baby's either not tolerating labor very well or the environment of the uterus. And if you were to continue to try to have a vaginal delivery or a vaginal birth, it could compromise the baby's health. Or even sometimes there's maternal issues like the mother is not compensating well with labor. And so in order to make sure that she's okay, there might be a a decision to go towards a C-section. Other reasons are for things like if your cervix doesn't dilate to 10 centimeters, even though we've given you tons of time and we've tried different methods to try to get that cervix to get to 10 centimeters, if your cervix just doesn't get to that place, then um, we do recommend a C-section at that point. What I want to know and want to hear from you, I have my own thoughts, but what I want to hear from you is why is childbirth so life-threatening? What is it that a woman actually goes through when she's having the baby that leads to these life-threatening consequences? So there are some conditions that can happen that happen very quickly, and that's part of the reason why childbirth can be dangerous. So things like bleeding can happen. And by bleeding, I mean very heavy bleeding or hemorrhaging can happen right after the delivery of the baby. And if you don't act very quickly to stop the bleeding, and if they lost blood, replace the, the blood loss, meaning blood transfusions and things of that nature, then it could lead to either death or really serious problems for that person. Additionally, blood clots are way more common around pregnancy and immediately after childbirth than in other times in a person's life. And so there is a higher risk of having life-threatening blood clots that can, I, that can travel up into the lungs and can cause major issues. The key to it is really being keen on identifying one, risk factors, and then monitoring things closely with the pregnant person and making sure that if there are any concerning warning signs that you address them in order to avoid the worst happening. Number five, Dr. Irupanda, I have to ask about different places people give birth or ask to give birth. I mean, you've got home birth, birth centers, water births, I literally saw a video of an ocean birth, and then obviously the hospital. What do you tell patients when it comes to safety and where they should be given birth? It's a hot topic. In terms of kind of official recommendations from places like the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, which I am a member of, and that's kind of the governing body of obstetricians, essentially um, they, would prefer in-hospital births as opposed to out-of-hospital births. There's a consideration that would be made in doing them about the risk level of the patient to have complications or an issue at birth. And so typically the recommendation from physicians and from big governing bodies is that they would prefer you to do an in-hospital birth, but if out of hospital for it to be low risk. And so these out of hospital births are attended by, meaning that the people who guide the birthing person through this process is a midwife. Um, there are other people who may do that, who may not have certain credentials. And that is something that also needs to be parsed out, but specifically midwives do out of hospital births. One reason why obstetricians feel wary about out of hospital births is that many Obstetricians believe that a seemingly quote unquote normal birth can go wrong very quickly and then become some, a high risk situation. So if you're in a place that doesn't have all, access to all of the medications and surgical procedures and things like that, that a hospital would, there's a concern that um, the patient or the person who's giving birth can have an issue. Based off of what you just answered, Dr. Irabunda, what is the one thing you wish people knew before they had a child? 
Is there something that you tell your patients, even patients who aren't pregnant yet? Is there one thing that you wish that they knew about childbirth? Some things that I wish people knew before they went into labor is that you can't control every single part of it. Really and truly just making sure that you can be flexible at times when that's necessary is fine as long as you feel heard, you feel respected, and you feel like you understand what's going on. But I just feel like sometimes people make these very rigid plans and I understand that we all have a vision in our mind of how things should go. Um, but just understand that this is a process that unfortunately we don't have a lot of control over some of the details of. Number seven, this question could literally turn into a Netflix series. What is something that needs to change here in order to make childbirth safer? What do lawmakers need to be paying attention to? Things like access to proper health care, access to proper food and healthy food items, access to um, access to education, even environmental causes like toxins within someone's community, because in certain parts of this country, you may be living close to a major highway. You may be living close to a power plant and that can affect your health and that affects the outcomes of childbirth and childbirth and how and maternal morbidity and mortality is directly linked to the health of an entire community. And by acknowledging the link between poor outcomes and social determinants of health and access to care, I think allows for better holistic solutions to this. Dr. Arabunda, thank you so much for joining our show today. We really appreciate you being here. We really appreciate having you. We would love to have you again in the future. For those of you that haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button right here. Go ahead and click that subscribe button on YouTube so you can join us next week for some more Doctor Saying Stuff fun. And if you have your own childbirth questions, stories, controversies, throw them in the comment section. Remember, childbirth is just one part in this entire process. We'll be back with more women's health and reproductive health topics such as pregnancy and everything that happens after childbirth as well. So stay tuned. We are doctors saying stuff.